planet Earth, a rich, diverse biosphere of awe-inspiring wonder. Home to an estimated 7.5 billion humans and an unknowable population of animals said to be in the billion billions. As well as being our planet, it is very much also theirs. But unfortunately, animals don't get any kind of say into how it's run. Sadly, our incredibly poor management of the natural world is now having detrimental and irreversible effects. And the most damaging of all is the mass production and consumption of cheap meat known as factory farming, a destructive form of farming that is causing devastating damage to our planet. Most terrifying of all, it is now threatening life on Earth as we know it. The burgeoning human population is gobbling up all of Earth's resources at an alarming rate. Right now, the world's focus is very much on climate change and how to solve it. However, we must act immediately on another potent threat to life on Earth, which is sadly also caused by us. Factory farming is the ultimate out of sight, out of mind. The animals are behind closed doors and the meat and milk that comes from those factory farms is labelled in ways which disguise the truth. The Mississippi River drains a third of North America. It's an industrial corridor that is one of the highest densities of petrochemical industry in the country huge industrial factories like, taking in raw materials, making them into fertilizer in huge volumes, and then shipping that fertilizer up to the Midwest where it's being used on crops, corn, soybeans, and that sort of thing. What we're seeing happen is a lot of those nutrients are not staying on the fields. They're running off with rainwater and getting into the Mississippi River, getting into the Gulf of Mexico and causing a dead zone. This is one of the world's biggest dead zones. Pollution is coming from upriver, from industrial agriculture, here, into the Gulf of Mexico, and killing it. Most of the nitrogen and phosphorus comes from agricultural activities. The US Geological Survey has done the models and accounted for where it comes from and how much comes from what activity, primarily agriculture. The more corn they grow, the more fertilizer runs off into the river and comes down and makes the dead zone even larger. There is a mix of corn for cattle, corn for cars, and corn for people. But I really got the sense that the corn for people was the much smaller slice. Brazil is a huge country with vast amounts of land, yet land does seem to be concentrated in the hands of fewer and fewer, bigger and bigger industrial farmers. A lot of the world's factory farming is powered by the deforested plains here in Brazil, the monocultures of soil that are used to rear industrial animals. Governments shout about a global food crisis that is on the horizon and the need to double food production by mid-century. What they fail to acknowledge is that the food system already produces enough to feed everyone today and in the foreseeable future. I remain questioning of the use of vast acreages of land, not to feed people, but to feed cars and cattle. When cattle are taken off grass, their natural habitat, and they're put into a place like this, a feedlot, we then start feeding them corn. And in that simple manoeuvre, cattle from grass to corn fed, we set up a competition between people and animals for food. Incredibly, the biggest single area of food waste comes not from what we throw in the bin, but from feeding human edible crops to industrially reared animals. The demand for food production is such 
that some predict the global livestock population, which currently stands at some 70 billion farm animals, will double by 2050, further intensifying pressure on a natural world which is already in steep decline. Agriculture occupies half of the Earth's usable land surface, and that proportion is growing by the day at the expense of mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians and fish, whose populations have halved within the last 40 years, and at the rate we are destroying the planet, some will be decimated in the next 30. As intensive agriculture encroaches on the real countryside, animals become refugees. Part of the reason why this forest is gone is because factory farmed animals, caged, crammed and confined in Europe, are being fed on the palm kernel. That forest is literally disappearing in front of our eyes here. Do you think that this palm plantation is going to cover the whole area? Absolutely, yeah. Wonderful animals like the orangutan, the tiger and the elephant are being pushed out. Yeah, this is what we've done to them. I feel ashamed for us as a species, to be honest. Why have we done this? We need to bring it back to the elephant as their habitat. For us as humans, if we lose the elephant, then we fail. The fish that these penguins depend on is being taken away to feed factory farmed animals. The sad part about it is it's sadly not going for human consumption, but most of the rest is turning to fish meal. They used to number millions. Now they're down to just tens of thousands. We lost more than 70% now in 12 years. There are no farm animals out in the fields here in the Po Valley. It seems to me that there's a whole generation that have just lost that memory of how to keep animals out where I believe they belong, in fresh air and sunshine. You don't see any single farm animal because they are all factory farmed. They are hidden from the view of the people. They live confined in shed. They have really little space. They will never see a blade of grass uh, for all their lives. It isn't just farm animals that are going missing from the landscape. Iconic farmland birds, like the skylark, are also disappearing. It's another potent symbol of the impact of cheap meat. The stuff that's going into feeding animals to produce beef, milk and pork in Europe is helping to fuel the destruction. While typically attributed to climate change and habitat destruction, few people realise that there is a direct link with animal extinction and consumer demand for cheap meat. More shocking still, though, is that the effects being seen from factory farming are of equal harm to humanity as those of global warming. In fact, the two are very much interlinked, with ever-increasing livestock numbers being a potent driver of greenhouse gas emissions. Factory farming isn't just a marginal concern, isn't just the domain of crazy animal lovers, that actually it's central to what's going wrong in our food system. This could be feeding hungry people. So much of it is destined as cow feed. Children face hunger, yet food has never been cheaper. That's a shocking indictment of what's wrong with our broken food system. Wake up, time is running out. We have to end factory farming now, not just talk about the next tiny increment. Future generations looking at the way that factory farming is trashing the environment and squandering our ability to produce food in the future. Future generations will not judge us kindly if we don't stop factory farming. There are many farming heroes out there that are keeping animals in a decent way, and we should support them. We need to reintroduce the animals back onto the farm, using grazing animals as a tool to recuperate the soil. And at the same time, the welfare of those animals is much more natural.
We can rear animals in the way that is compassionate, where the animals enjoy fresh air and sunshine, where they can run and jump and play and stretch their wings. We can move away from factory farming, a move so essential if we are to avoid collapse of the very ecosystem our future depends upon. And you can help. If you have been moved by this short film and want to learn more, you need to read Dead Zone, Where the Wild Things Were by Philip Limbury. This compelling book will take you on a journey to help you understand how we can all play a part in saving our planet before it's too late. All royalties go to Compassion in World Farming.